And the, even the teacher was giving me like a, not necessarily like an I think you're a bad dad look, but giving me a look of like, um, I didn't really want to deal with your kid today. Like this is not daycare. This is like a real activity. And I just want to tell him like, no disrespect. I really respect what you guys do here, but it is daycare. She's three. You're not, none of this information is sticking. You might be stoking like the fires of inspiration that maybe could affect her life later and lead her to find a hobby, but she's three and a half years old. They use daycare. Mostly we're dropping her off at a place where she gets to like do an activity, but also like somebody's watching the door to make sure she doesn't run out into traffic and get hit by a car. So that like my wife and I can have like a 45 minute break. <laughs> I'm sure you do stuff that's not daycare. You have older kids come in here from time to time. But like toddlers, that's daycare. Yeah, I had to teach some five-year-olds when I was in Korea. I had some classes where I taught like 13-year-olds. Seven out of eight of them not paying attention. One of them, you know, you could see the light bulbs going off in their brain. You're teaching a class full of five-year-olds. It's just, it's songs and clapping, man. Songs, snacks, and clapping. That's it. You got to know your role. He's, he's pretty chill, though. I'm not trying to light him up. I wouldn't want to deal with somebody else's kid having a bad attitude either. <laughs> but that's, I guess, when he, like, rolled his eyes. I should have been like, I know, right? You tell me. Instead, I was like, what do you say fuck me for? I should have tried to find a way to bring us together instead of immediately going on the defensive, I suppose. Yeah, we got to unite, <laughs> unite against our kid. <laughs> Not against, but you know. Gonna be a united front. There should be a parent union. I'm getting to take advantage of as an employee of my daughter's business. Like the hours are crazy. It's like almost a 24 seven job. And then also you're on call 24 seven. Like, we, we should not be having any more 9 p.m. bedtimes. That's insanity. That should be, like, codified in the collective bargaining agreement. 7.45 pajamas, brush your teeth, 8 p.m. story time, 8.30 lights out. Not, it's 9 p.m. We stepping out the damn bathtub. Like, can I help you? How is that her fault? Listen, okay, <laughs> people are busy. <laughs> caught, caught. I had an 8 p.m. bedtime until sixth grade. I feel that. I remember in sixth grade, our teacher asked us what our bedtime was. I'm trying not to damn anybody in chat with this, okay? But like, I probably went to bed around nine when I was in the sixth grade. And I remember some girl in the class was like, I go to bed at 11. And the whole class was basically like, what the fuck? 11 o'clock? Like, that's, that's an adult bedtime. That's madness. And... She's my only data point for like a middle schooler going to bed that late. And I don't want to replicate that lifestyle. Because I saw the results. She also said she never drank water because she didn't like the taste. Like that's, that's what we're dealing with here. Saved. Is she still alive? I honestly have no idea. There's probably like a 97% chance she is, but the human body is very resilient. That's the first thing you need to know. Get it twisted. She 
could be watching. Yeah, she could be. Hello, Chibli. My bedtime was 2 a.m. in the sixth grade. Now, this, this could go one of two ways, okay? Because I think, like, when I taught in Korea, lots of middle schoolers went to bed at, like, 1 a.m. Because they, like, go to school, finish school, eat something. Then they go to, like, academy. And they go to, like, six different academies. And then they get home at, like, 10, eat dinner. And then they have to do three hours of homework. But if, it's, if we're talking about, it like, a D-gen 2 a.m. in the sixth grade... I need to know more about your life story. Like, what, what happened after that? Because you're not in the sixth grade anymore. Did you go to school? Because, like, if you woke up at... I'm assuming, like, let's say seven or something like that. You went to bed at two? I want to know, like, the effects on your body of... Not to, not to be too sensitive, but like of getting five hours of sleep when you're 12 years old. Because like, I, I probably could prioritize getting more sleep as an adult. Sleep is obviously good for you. And it, like, is, it's a form of preventative medicine. But I'm also like, it's not like I'm going to be in the NBA if I start getting eight hours of sleep a night. But like... The time in your life when you should be eating like crazy and sleeping like crazy is definitely like, you know, zero to 18. It's like after that, you know, the cake is kind of set, I feel. <laughs> don't, 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 don't. You know, you can still change like, you know, you want sprinkles or like fruit on the top, but... My memory is rapidly declining. I'm 17. I sleep six to seven hours a night. That, see, because you're, you're putting me on notice here. When I was 17, that's about how much sleep I was getting. I was watching reruns of uh, My So-Called Life on YTV. I think it aired at 11.15, finished at 11.40 or so. Then I went to bed, get up at like 6.45. Listening to Elwood Blues on K-Rock. Yeah, are you smoking weed, bro? Because that can do it too. I've been told. Yes. Okay, hang on. Just wait. All right, all right, all right. I feel like six is okay, right? <laughs> no, I don't think so. No? It's different strokes for... Listen, I, I, getting more sleep is obviously good. I'm not saying sleep is fake. I would say, like, on average, I sleep, like, 11 to 5.45. So that's basically like six hours, especially when you factor in that it gets like all, it, it gets interrupted all the time. And maybe it's just I've been in it so long that I don't know how decroted I am, but I actually feel like, I feel pretty good, I think. I, I feel normal, at least. You have a child is different. You, what the fuck? Like, my arteries are like, don't get hard. <laughs> you have a kid? <laughs> Hang on. It's like when actors were smoking, right? These, oh, these cigarettes don't count. Don't get emphysema, bro. It's for a movie. I'm not a smoker. I'm smoking cigarettes for a movie. Couldn't you just sleep in till 7? Yeah, but then I would, like, something's got to give, right? Then I wouldn't be exercising. I place a lot of value on the exercise. That one's my bad. Hold. It's, it, you know, this is a very turbulent area here. Might get stuck a bit. 
That's important. You should be proud of yourself. Thank you, Chibli. Very cool. Chibli, can I tell you something? I don't mean this as, um, it, well, it is an insult, but I don't mean it as an insult. If you really stop and think about it, it's actually like one of the greatest compliments you can get as a streamer. I am a little surprised to see you doing Elden Ring streams to prepare for the Elden Ring DLC. Because my if you want if you're obsessed with Elden Ring and you want to play it that's live your truth, okay? But I don't I don't see that as being where your strengths lie. Like I see that like Andre 3000 doing a a instrumental jazz flute album. It's like if that's what you want to do, if that's what your passion is, then you should live your truth. But at the same time, we really want the artist storytelling part three. We're all waiting for the artist storytelling part three. We're all waiting for another Eastern European game from Playway Studios that is like, you know, casino dealer simulator or something like that. I'm not playing it. It's just a filler segment. Okay. Okay. I appreciate that. He called Elden Ring filler. We're the only two streamers on the platform that are that are speaking the truth right now. Based, based, based. Chib, are you going to play Once a Porn at Time too? It just came out. It's got mostly positive reviews on Steam. Do you want me to read the tags again? There's lots of stuff. <laughs> some of which you might be into, some of which might be a deal breaker. I don't know. Everybody's different. Oh, you already beat it. All right. Plus two. I get it. I get it. And he won the game by breathing manually. <laughs> oh, man. No! Sorry, I was looking at it on Steam. You know what I was thinking about, Chibli? It's crazy the way life works out. I think if we were the same age we wouldn't be friends. Like, if we went to school together, I don't think we'd be friends. I think I would resent you. Because I'm funny, but I have, like, the kind of humor that turns people away. And you're funny, but you have, like, the kind of humor that brings people together. So I think, like, in the high school lunchroom, I would have been like, yeah, he's funny, but he's not that funny. Why does he have, like, so many more friends than me? And then I'd be ripping into like, you know, material inspired by Dennis Miller and shit as like age 15. And then people would just be like, that's pretty funny. And then Chib would be like, what the tuna? <laughs> taco, taco Wednesday. What, what in the tuna just happened here? And people would be like, that's the funniest shit I've ever heard. And I would be like, it's funny, but it's not that funny. It took me being mature, I think. A world where I was older and more mature and more willing to, you know, accept my own strengths and weaknesses in order to... I'm saying it's hard to be your friend, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's hard to be your friend. But through a lot of practice and, you know, mistakes and, and perseverance, we got there. We got there. <laughs> Karma, he's swifty posting. Karma is the ball rolling down the hill. There it goes. It's kind of nice, it's a break for the ball too. You're a puss, you wouldn't do it. It actually picked up speed on the incline. How does that make sense? Riddle me this shit, Isaac Newton.
Speaking of tuna, I'm going to a tinned fish party tonight. Least a aristocratic Danish viewer be like, tinned fish party, huh? I gotta say, I love fish and I love tins. I've really only had one tinned fish, one, one type, and it's tuna. I've never had a tinned salmon or like a tinned uh, herring or a, a, even a canned sardine as far as I know. I kind of get down with fish though. It's crazy too because I'm one of those guys, you don't see too many of us this modern day. But I'm also a um, the fishier the better type of guy. You know, like the sushi pieces that sometimes people don't like because they say this one's a little too fishy for me? That's the stuff I get down with the most. I mean, what else do you want me to say? <laughs> Women love him. So true. I mean, they're calling me the catch of the century. The guy who doesn't mind trading his tuna piece for your mackerel piece. Hang on. This is lock-in central. Hold. 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 <laughs> I'm just staring at Chad. <laughs> There you go. Gotta grab it. Left one was feeling a little left out. We go back in there. Looking pretty well balanced. Give the left a squeeze. The right a squeeze. Give the right a squeeze. It's been a minute. Little how's your father? Okay, next time. Next time. He's as locked in as a ballpark bathroom. I'm going to let chat do an am I the asshole on this one, okay? Had my daughter uh, at a used bookstore yesterday. While paying, she starts doing the pee pee dance. It's what toddlers do when they have to go to the bathroom. They don't say I need to go potty. You have to guess based on their, their actions. So I say, you have to go potty? She say, yeah. I say, okay. So we go to a coffee shop. In Vancouver, it's always a dice roll. Am I going to have to ask for a key? Is the door going to be open? Is there going to be shit all over the toilet seat? Whatever. Is there going to be a, um, a code that I'm going to have to ask for? So I, I walk into the coffee shop. I take her all the way to the bathrooms. The door is open. Uh, I go in. I let her use the bathroom, obviously. I was not locked in there. Um, then, when we were leaving... I was like, I should buy something because the washroom is supposed to be customers only. Then I looked at the only employee that was working in the coffee shop and it was like a 17 year old. And I was like, buddy doesn't give a shit if I like buy a coffee. So I just walked out. Am I the asshole? <laughs> not the asshole, not the asshole. Well, I would just say, riddle me this. If your washroom is for customers only, how was I able to take a piss in the toilet without buying something? It appears that the bathroom has been mislabeled. My piss flowed totally fine from my urethra into the toilet. Sorry, it was a double flusher. Toddler exception. I appreciate that. I mean, I honestly don't feel like I should have to eat like a 300 calorie scone just because my daughter had to take a piss, honestly. Yeah, we didn't make a... I mean, we... I'm not going to say we left no mess. We left no visible mess, but obviously there's the wear and tear of like one flush on the toilet and a little bit of paper towel and soap, but... Just leave them a $5 bill on the counter? I'm not paying five bucks to use the bathroom. What is this, Italy?
is madness. It's still going. It is. <laughs> it is going. Did you tip the attendant? You didn't happen to see anything at all, did you? You guys know the cable guy? It's, it's going for a bit of a journey here. All the way back to the scarecrows, huh? Saved. <laughs> oh, man. Sometimes I feel like I'm the cable guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember Josh Brolin, Deadpool 2, right? Sometimes I did the same, misusing my power, full of resentment. Sometimes I did the opposite, using my power appropriately, full of joy and jolly cooperation. The celebration of Ricky was all around me. Ricky? Yeah, because it's the opposite of Lucy, bro. You never watch Nick at Night? I found myself sleeping in a hotel room. <laughs> anyway, to enter into a fair contract with the caterpillar. Yeah, I got a couple Kendrick songs on the on the Peloton playlist. All right, King Kunta. These Walls, that might be the only, because I don't want to put, listen, half the songs on it could easily go on the playlist, but you don't want the whole playlist to be like to pimp a butterfly. You gotta, you just take the, you take the very creamiest of the cream off the top. What about Not Like Us? I don't want to be this guy, okay, I don't want to, I don't want to make the Kendrick super fans angry, but I kind of like don't like when he does the Kendrick voice. And I, he seems to do it a lot in that song. And also, I don't really care about Drake. Like, I'm not invested in the, in the beef. So I'm more of a to pip a butterfly sort of guy. The voice is peak. I just, <laughs> it's just not my, it's not my preferred Kendrick, okay? Money Trees is on the playlist, too. Money Trees is on the playlist. What's the voice? You know, I can't do it, but you know the voice. There's like... <laughs> I don't, listen, listen. I don't know it. I don't know how to describe it. I don't mean this as bad as it sounds. But, you know, he has, like, the voice where he sounds like himself. And then he has the voice where he kind of sounds like he's doing, like, a Bubbles from Trailer Park Boy, uh, Boys impression. You know, the, I'm not, he's, a, he's one of the preeminent artists of our time. I'm just saying he has the voice. I'm not doing the voice, Reverend Mother Jessica, dipped in the Fremen Sieges Water of Life oil. Would you do the voice to save someone's life? I did the voice once, and it's haunted me ever since. I 
keep it going, keep it going. Keck WQ, Keck WQ. What do you think is bad about doing the voice? My impression of the voice will not be good. It'll be embarrassing to do. I'm getting that energy right now where like, you know, the nerd in your class tells you something embarrassing. Like he's been practicing the dance to Canned Heat by Jamiroquai all weekend. And then everybody else in the class starts pressuring him to do the dance. Because it'll be funny as fuck. But then the kid is like, I don't want to do the dance because you're all going to laugh at me. And then they all gaslight him into being like, no, bro, we just want to see the dance. We just want to see the dance. It'll be cool as shit to see you dance to Jamiroquai. And then they start doing it and everybody starts laughing. And you're like, oh, man, this is... <laughs> this is awkward. But a little funny. Just say a lyric so we know you're cool. <laughs> I've been on both sides of this canned heat interaction, okay? And they both feel bad. I'm, I'm recusing myself from the situation. We got to be better than this, man. You going to come to my tinned fish party? Nah, it sounds like a places to get your last known photograph taken at. But I'm sure you're like, it's cool or whatever. What are you talking about? Well, I don't know, like eating a tin of fish is not that weird. Throwing a tin fish party, like no disrespect, isn't that the shit that like millennials are doing to spice up their social lives when they decided that they're going to be child free? I've seen all those like, you know, millennials are throwing parties where they have to give PowerPoint presentations. And I'm like, I just, you can catch me at the, at the indoor playground, man. I'm not showing up at the potluck and giving a 10 minute PowerPoint presentation about Twitch.tv. I'd rather... I'd rather do a lot of so I'd rather do the canned heat dance. <laughs> they bang? I, I believe if you got the right crowd, it could bang. I don't want to do it, though. I'd rather go to board game night, and that's saying something for a guy like me. They wouldn't invite you anyway? Yeah, because they already know too much about my job because they've been watching me for six months. You like board games, though? Yeah, like the ones that take like two minutes to learn and a lifetime to master, like Sushi Go and shit like that. Euchre, yeah, dude, Euchre. You ever worry other daycare parents might see your content? I, I say this sincerely. And it, it took me a while to get here, but I, this is how I genuinely feel. I'm not doing anything wrong. I don't know what else to say. Like, why, why would I? I'm not embarrassed. Sometimes I'm embarrassed when I explain it. Just because I'm like, I don't know. It's a little unusual. But like... I don't know. Like if you're a stand-up comedian or something like that. Do you get embarrassed if like somebody that your daughter is friends with like watched your special? I mean, that's your job. That's what it's there for. It's like being a chef and being like, oh, what if Jenny's parents eat at my restaurant? You're the one who opened the doors, bro. That's good for business. Yeah, they'd probably feel embarrassed if I saw them at work, you know, like doing emergency surgery in the ICU or fucking sending emails and shit. <laughs> they'd probably be, they'd be like, why are you watching me, bro? What if you did OnlyFans? Well, I think that would be different for me, but I think that's a problem with me and maybe with society. 
not a problem necessarily with the role. But if you like show your nude body online and you genuinely don't care if people recognize you, I think you're built different. Because like I don't even like that my wife knows what I look like with my shirt off. That's like one of the most intimate secrets between the two of us. So like to take that and multiply it by like a million strangers, that, that would take a while for me to wrap my head around, I think. <laughs> You've exposed your breasts to your wife? Yeah, yeah, on occasion. It's true. Aren't you fit? Yeah, like I'm doing okay, but still like, I don't know. Like, other men in their 30s feel this way. Like, you know when you take off your shirt and like your nipples look like eyes and then your belly button looks like a mouth? So it kind of looks like, like your whole midsection is doing this. And you're like looking at your midsection in the mirror and you're like, who the fuck invited this guy? And he's just like, <laughs> not really. You need to do drugs. I'm just kidding. I don't know. Maybe you got to add a couple percentages of body fat to understand that. I don't know. Yeah, but I'm like, who brought this guy? Aren't you like 3% body fat? Nah, I'm pretty sure that's like dangerous, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> that seems bad. Losing weight seems fucked up anyway, because I've heard like, um, why was the, what was the main reason anyone would lose weight for? Make their dick look bigger. Okay, so I've heard like, you know, every 20 pounds you lose adds like a half an inch to your, your visible dick size or whatever. But like, is it worth it? Because like, I feel like if I lost 20 pounds, I'd be losing like at least a quarter inch off of my girth too. So I got to do some kind of like analysis. Can somebody do like a linear regression and tell me like what my optimal weight should be? There's no dick fat? What are you talking about? Bro, I've seen some fat dicks, okay? You're gonna tell me there's no lipids stored there? That doesn't make sense. Next, you're gonna tell me there's no bone in that motherfucker. Okay, why do they call it a boner then? Dr. Zayas? Nine minutes. <laughs> No. Dr. Zayas, formerly Chucks. The other daycare parent that just turned into this, tuned into the stream. <clears throat> yeah, okay. But I'm not, I don't know, I'm not embarrassed, like, because I'm, I, again, I'm not a narcissist, but I have a healthy level of self-confidence, not about the appearance of my midsection, but about the ideas that flow forth from my brain. If they're like, why were you talking about that shit? Why are you talking about fat being on the penis? I would be like, are you seeing the chat? People are laughing, man. They're having a good time. It's like asking a DJ why they're spinning all those records up there. Because you, you're pretending to be working. Otherwise, people will get mad at you for being on stage. What am I supposed to do? Just like not talk at all for the whole stream? And then like tweet some fucked up alt-right shit on Twitter? <laughs> and then... <laughs> Go live again to like 10,000 gift subs pouring in and people are like, we knew you were the goat. And I'm like, I don't even say anything, man. It would be a great April, April 1st idea, though. <laughs> oh, man. Hold, hold, hold. We're talking about real experience. I don't know why people won't talk about dicks, man. 
It's not weird. It's weird to think that a dick is... There are weird dicks, but dicks is a concept. It's weird to think that dicks are weird. When we all know the vaginas are like way weirder. Hang on. We're going to walk that back a little bit. We can't get... <laughs> true though. True. <laughs> Hold, 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 hold. Balls are probably weirder, but it's like overdone. This, this is a little weird, okay? And some of you are going to like cringe physically when you hear this. But like, what does a testicle look like on the inside of the testicle? Because I really feel like if you were to uh, like bisect one, it would be like like ramen noodles in there. Kind of. It's like a little brain. It kind of is. That's crazy. I don't, like, there's some skin on my body where, like, I don't know. Or some parts of my body where I'm like, I don't know what the fuck is going on in there. Again, am I adding a little sauce to this? Yes, but I think we could, should be able to talk about human anatomy that we all interface with in one way or the other without being like little kids about it. Like, what the fuck is the head of your dick made out of, man? Because that's not, it doesn't appear naturally anywhere else on the body. It's like 20 times thicker than the skin that surrounds it. In a different color. <laughs> like, what the, what the fuck were they cooking when they made that, man? That's like when you open a Lego set and it's like 99% the 2 by 4 bricks that you've seen. And then there's like one piece where you're like, what am I doing with this? You're like looking at the box like, where does this motherfucker go? Oh, there it goes. Fits perfectly. They're poorly designed. First off, I'm not like other girls. I feel like um, it wasn't designed. I feel like it's evolution. I feel like it's an accident. Secondly, I feel like the dick is pretty good at doing what it's supposed to do. Quote unquote, supposed to do from Mother Nature's perspective. Come delivery system. Piss delivery system. Could it be better? Yeah, probably. Like, I think it'd be sick if you could control it. Like, you could control, like, your finger or your tongue or something. That would open up, like, a lot of avenues. It's kind of like... I mean, you can do some work with it, but it's kind of like a, a blunt instrument, right? But, like, I guess evolution just decided, like, that's not necessary. Which is fine. You know, you, you got to work with what you got. Imagine you could move your dick like a finger and you could scratch your balls with your dick. Why does that have the same energy as the, the Kevin Smith tweet? 20 years of marriage and we're still scratching our balls with our dicks. <laughs> oh, man. She pones my dick balls brown area. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man, that is funny. It's crazy how babies can't do anything for, like, four years. It is crazy. I mean, they can't do anything for, like... They can't do much for, like... I don't know, like, 12 years, basically. I mean, our daughter is three. We're basically... She's almost four, I guess. And we're at the point where, like, I now feel like I can leave her alone in a room for like five minutes and not have to check every minute to make sure she didn't like swallow a battery or something that's a big step though because it means like i can poop with the door closed no oh, what did you get like a, it's elastic
be at the book fair. I get it. I get it. Dude, also, you want to take 90s maxing to the max? When I was at that used bookstore yesterday, I bought three books. They didn't have price tags on them. I brought them up to the cash. She just looked at it for like a second, and she's like, I'm going to charge you four bucks for these two, and this one's going to be ten bucks. And I was like, okay. That was kind of like in the range of what I assumed that the prices were going to be. <laughs> I wasn't out here haggling. Like, to be honest, I didn't want the books that much anyway. You know, I could have I could have walked away, but... It felt like being back in the, like, Mesopotamia or something. I was like, there's no price tag? And she wrote the shit down in, like, a lined notebook on a piece of paper. Like, with, with a pen, in cursive. I was like, this shit does not exist. This is an experience I haven't had since, like, 1996. Is this on Main Street? Nah, we were chilling on West 4th. You know how it is. We're pogging up. Getting a couple of books. Getting the snack at Brecca. Not really exploring much else because my daughter had to go to the bathroom. Marg Tower. <laughs> then we went to the Museum of Fine Arts. Had a great time, chilled at the Cubs game, another Marg Tower. I know what you're talking about. Favorite restaurant on Maine that isn't published? I haven't been to published. You got to talk to Corey about that. I'm a sing sing girly. Let me think about what else is on Maine. I mean, if we're talking Maine, I mean, Brass Neck Brewery is pretty goaded as you get a little further north. I'm trying to think of what's out there. Main Street. It's been a bit, man. It's been a bit since I've perused Main Street. Oh, no! Well, it's perfect timing. Let's just figure out where we're stopped here. Or <laughs> are we? Is this game even fun? True fun comes from within. The fun exists within my brain. I am a divine being. Life was whispered into me by two people that loved me. No game can either create nor destroy the dopamine that exists in my own cerebrum. I don't give the ones and zeros that much power. Clip farming? All right, you caught me. Librarian, you gonna watch some uh, Wong Kar Wai films? You gonna watch In the Mood for Love, you son of a bitch? I'm, I'm, I'm workshopping the way to end the next clip. Life was whispered into me like Tony Lung whispered into the rock at the end of In the Mood for Love. And you deign to speak to me? Spoilers? I haven't seen it. <laughs> I just read a lot of essays, man. Okay, give me a second here. Hold, hold. It's Pride Month. You should watch Happy Together. I already watched Bros, okay? I was going to say I'm good for a lifetime, but I think that that comes across the wrong way. Plus, I thought Bros was pretty good. I understand why there was backlash to Bros. Because Billy Eichner, when it underperformed at the box office, said straight people don't want to see it. And then straight people were like, if he said that shit, then I'm never going to fucking see it. I'm straight and I saw it. I thought it was like a 7 out of 10. I thought it was pretty good. You're a top 10 ally? I honestly must have mental problems because I believe that. I 
I mean, I'm not, I don't know if I'm really out there like doing anything to help the cause, but you could tell me anything and I would be like, that's great for you. Like, go get it. I only judge people for like perceived social faux pas in the grocery store. What, what they do in the bedroom is not really my business, man. In fact, the, you know, what they do in the kitchen is none of my business, quite frankly. Or like in the living room or steps to the basement. Crawl space doesn't bother me. That's what it's there for. <laughs> is this a reference to the closet? No, it's a reference to having intercourse in rooms in your house that are not the bedroom. Roommate's bed when he goes home for Thanksgiving. You know, that old chestnut. Just mixing it up a little bit. Washing the sheets. If you get a chance, like, don't, you know, ruin your day over it or whatever. Hold, 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 My roommate did that once. I found his blank, blank, blank on my bed. Did he hit you with the wasn't me? Dude, can you imagine how good this would feel on your palms? This shit would be so fucking relaxing. Look, oh, oh man. Yes, this would heal me. Yes. Get it twisted. Put your hand into the thing that the bowling balls come up through at the bowling alley. What could go wrong? Oh, man. Okay. Slash marker. That's Sisyphus. It was a good day. It was a good day for Sis 